I'm glad you think so. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> interesting. Oh, it's like a coral. You talk to a white person. I mean, you know, white color. She's seen yeah. in my home. She oh. knows. <laughs> I think it's a fun color. It's just, yeah, try to call mustard seeds. It's kind of this really coral, terracotta, coral color. It's really neat. So we've got these cute little metal pots here, and we're going to use the bonding agents. And what we're going to do, when you have a surface that has a coating on it, a, a plastic or a glass or a metal, you want to use the bonding agent. You mix that in with the milk paint, and then you paint it on, and it's going to adhere really, really well to that surface. So for the bonding agent, you just snap open the lid, and I'm just going to use maybe a tiny cup. Since this is my favorite color, I'm just going to put a little in here, and I'm just going to put a little bit of the bonding agent in. You, you can do up to one to one, one part of the bonding agent, one part of the premix milk paint. Give a little stir around, and I'm just going to use this. This will ensure that it definitely adheres to the container, and it works. I go to Ikea and I pick up those uh, pots that they have there. Sorry? <laughs> well, the bonding agent does change the consistency up a little bit. It might make it look almost a little bit thinner um, and smoother, yes. But I actually kind of like to do this and make it look a little bit streaky. And then I sand it a little bit after. You can throw on another color and kind of wash effect it. It'd be really cool. And I'm dripping all over the place, but that's okay. So there you go. So really simply, you're just going to add about one part of the bonding agent to one part of the milk paint, and it will stick, and that will last forever, forever. I've done a couple pieces of, a um, couple pots about three years ago from Ikea, and I try and I scratch and scratch away at it, and that paint is going nowhere. Hmm. So this stuff sticks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you can see it's really liquidy. It's kind of starting to fall mm -hmm. down. Yeah, we kind of thinned it out, right? When you add the bonding agent, kind of thins it out a little bit. So kind of cool, though. It's interesting. <laughs> what I would do, actually, I would probably add a little more powder to it to thicken it up a little bit. So you don't want it to be too runny or too thin. But can you do the inside too? I mean, yes, of course. Oh, absolutely. I'm totally. I'm paint and paint I'm away to your heart's I'm content. I'm now, I want to talk a little bit about this chippy look. A lot of people absolutely love the chippy look. Why does the chippy look happen? It happens because you're putting a paint on a surface that is resisting that paint. So, for instance, we're working with uh, completely bare wood surfaces here. These are very porous, so you're not going to get that chippy look. But, for example, this amazing chair here. So you can see it's got a very shiny undercoat finish. Really awesome close up of that. So you can see really shiny undercoat red there. And did you put the bonding agent on that at all? No, no bonding agent. So there you go. That's what's going to happen without the bonding agent on a surface that's already been coated. It's going to really resist that milk paint and just going to kind of flake it off here and there. Now at this stage, if you go to top coat finish it with a wax or an oil, it's not going to stop the chipping from happening. You really have to seal that in with a poly coating. These finishes are beautiful finishes. Very strong, very durable. But you have to think of that under layer that's on there already. There is no way that the waxes or the oils can penetrate through the milk paint, through that under layer that was super shiny, and hold it all in. It doesn't trap anything in. These are breathable finishes. Very durable, but breathable. Whereas the poly coating, I always kind of say it's like a plastic layer. It's like a film that goes all over it and traps it in. So you're never going to have continuous chipping and peeling over time. It's one of the most common questions that I get. I painted something, it's chipping, it's perfect, I love it, but it's still chipping and I can't get it to stop. So add the poly coating, get, you know, pick it off, flake it off till you're perfectly happy with it, then put that poly coating on there and it's not going to continue chipping anymore. If you don't put that poly coating on and you just use one of these finishes, that's okay, but just understand that it could potentially continue over time to chip. So now, if you want to get the chippy look, 
on something and we're working with this raw porous wood, you should not be able to get it with something that is porous. This is just going to soak up the milk paint. So what I like to do, I take a little bit of hemp oil on a piece that is this raw and, and wanting to soak in a lot. You might put two thin layers of this oil on. Let it sit for an hour or two if you can. Then put the milk paint on. And in those areas where you put this oil, you're going to get that chipping and flaking. Why? Because you've created a resistant area to that milk paint penetrating through. One coat will work. Two coats is better on a very porous surface like this. If you've got something that has been previously coated and you just want to make sure that you're for sure going to get the chippy look, just take a very, very thin amount of hemp oil and just apply it in the areas that you want to see the chipping and you're going to be guaranteed that it's going to fall off those areas. So if you want to control your chippy and exactly where it's going to be, just put a tiny, thin amount. You just have to be able to see it, and that's all. You don't want globs of it. You certainly wouldn't want to see drips of it. You just want a little pass of it, just a tiny little bit. I recommend that you maybe do a bit of experimentation with it to see how much you need. And like I said, on a porous piece like this, you're probably going to want to put two coats of this to really resist that. One coat will most likely do a bit, but a for sure guarantee, two coats, and it's going to come off for sure. Then once again, when you're happy with the level of chipping, you can kind of just flake it off with your fingertips. Um, you can pass over it with a, um, a scraper, anything that you have, and it's just going to kind of lift it all off when you're happy with it. Then you can put your poly coating on. So if you want the dark color underneath, whatever you want it to chip off to, you've got now on before you do the hemp oil. That's right. So if you've got, see, you're starting with uh, the typewriter, the black color first, and then you're going on top of it with the iron stone. You're going to do the typewriter first. One or two coats of that oil in those areas. Anywhere that you put that, it's just going to start to, to chip and peel off. So you put the iron stone on top, that'll all peel off in those areas. Um, the other thing too, if you mix the milk paint a little bit thicker and you use a hair dryer, it's going to crack, which is really, really cool. You can also get a crackle effect just by using the hemp oil. So for example, you do typewriter first, one coat of hemp oil over the entire thing, and then you put your coat of ironstone on top, you use a hair dryer, and you're going to get fine cracks everywhere. So instead of using a crackle medium, this gives you a very, very natural looking all over crackle, and it's very easy to do. Rather than, because crackle mediums can be very difficult to layer and get the right <laughs> consistency, the so it works, absolutely. The glass cabinet has glass on all four sides. You'll be able to see where the hemp oil is thin, and then there's the crackle. Yeah, definitely take a look at it. It's awesome. Um, hemp oil is also a completely food grade finish. So this is great for butcher block countertops. You can use this interior and exterior. The reason I really love oil is that you can literally pour it on, wipe it around, and you're done. You don't have to buff it like a wax. A wax you really should buff and do a couple layers. I just find this to be a little quicker and easier to use. The other great thing about the hemp oil, six months later, you want to change the color of your piece, the oil does dry out over time. So go ahead and put your next coat of paint on. Say you want to change the kitchen scale to white, just go ahead, paint right over top of it. As long as you didn't put you know, five to ten coats of this on, that color will stick to it after time. I've changed so many pieces six, six months to a year later. I didn't like the color anymore, I wanted to change it. Well, I just oiled it. It's great. With the waxes, you would have to remove most of the wax with the mineral spirit, sand it down a little bit, and then you could probably go over top of it with the milk paint. I like the hemp oil because I don't have to do any of that. And it's really easy to do large pieces all at once with this. Now these are quite small containers, but we do have larger sizes, so you don't have to use a lot because um, some of the pieces are quite porous. And if you've got old reclaimed wood, hemp oil is amazing. It's going to soak in and it's going to bring a real vibrancy and a real look, a beautiful finish to that wood. So I recommend it for floors, for anything and everything. It's beautiful. Catherine has got a beautiful, beautiful... People from Europe gather together um, twice a year okay. and bring their wares. So that is gorgeous. It's all 100% hemp oil. It's beautiful. This is the back.
And it's got a nice sheen to it. What did it look like before? I'll pull one up and show you. There's one that's dry. What is it? It's called a dough bowl mm -hmm. from dough. India. Hmm. Is that what they mix their bread in? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's what they mix their dough in. The older the wood, the darker it's going to go with the application of the hemp oil. Yeah, like this one here has the hemp oil on the back. See how that one is black. Mm. That's all the Oh wow. You can see how much lighter that is. Mm -hmm. Wow. They're for sale. <laughs> A lot of people use them as decorations on their tables. So there you go. So the one on the left has had no oil at all and the one on the right's just been oiled. How many how many coats did you put on that one on the right? I know you said you put quite a number because lots it was quite dry. I think I've used about seven cans mm -hmm. for the four mm -hmm. that I've done. Mm -hmm. But that's because they are completely dry. Mm -hmm. And the wood will tell you if you need more. If the hemp oil is just sitting on there like a film, wipe it down, wipe it off, you're done. Yeah. If it's still saying, give me more, it looks dry, give it some more. Yeah. This one didn't take as much because it wasn't exposed to the weather. Mm -hmm. The elements as much the other three. That's great. Beautiful. Thank you, Helen.